this lecture we will look at the stern model for elaborating on the capacitance of a double layer capacitor in the earlier lectures we had discussed two models for modeling the edlc in one of the model the helmholtz model the focus was predominantly on ions that are adsorbed to the electrode surface so this gave a behavior wherein capacitance was independent of voltage then in the goy chapman model um what we focused was on the these ions that are there in the entire double layer the goy chapman model is logically similar to the debye huckel model um when you look at the capacitance obtained from a goy chapman model you capture the behavior of capacitance with respect to potential that is the capacitance will vary with the potential that was captured by the goy chapman model so what is important is helmholtz model focuses only on these ions the goy chapman model focuses on these ions both had its victories and its deficiencies so the logical leap of the stern model was to consider that these two capacitances were in series that is the helmholtz capacitance which is represented here and the goy chapman capacitance which is representative of the capacitance contribution of the ions in this layer they are in series so that was the logical leap so um that um in a way captures many features we will see okay uh, what features it captures so we already discussed the formula for capacitance in series so all we do here is this is the formula for hel from the helmholtz model this is the formula from the goy chapman model so please refer to the previous lectures to get clarification on the notation so the capacitance of the double layer is obtained from the stern model by combining the capacitance of goy chapman capacitance and the helmholtz capacitance in series so plugging in the formula for the debye length you obtain this formula for uh this is the um capacitance for the double layer capacitance from the helmholtz model capacitance from the goy chapman model we have just in the previous formula we have just substituted the formula for debye length what is important to observe is that there is two permittivities so this permittivity refers to the permittivity in the bulk let's say for bulk water this would be 80 but this permittivity refers to the permitti permittivity permittivity in this region that is typically lesser of the order of let's say 6 because these water dipoles cannot roar orient itself to screen uh, the electric field so these two uh, permittivities are different so let's look at the behavior um in the stern model first what is important to recall is that when capacitances are in series the smallest capacitance dominates at low concentration the value of the goy chapman capacitance is less than that of the helmholtz capacitance at high concentration this is the regime relevant to practical application the helmholtz capacitance is less than that of the goy chapman capacitance 
So all these features have to be taken into account with this uh, behavior of capacitance in series. So let's put all these together. And what is the consequence of capacitance behavior under practical application? Under practical application, because this is the lesser of the two capacitors, capacitance, and the formula for this Helmholtz capacitance is given by this. And in this formula, there is no dependence of capacitance with respect to voltage. There is no variation of capacitance with change in voltages. So for practical applications, the double layer capacitance is almost a constant or approximately a constant. And it is predominantly determined by the Helmholtz capacitance. So what is plotted here? I mean, because we are using two different textbooks, the notation is slightly different, but uh, it's sort of obvious which refers to what. Um, so this is the double layer capacitance, but it is referred to as CS. Um, so what what is that we see here? So we are varying the potential and on the y-axis is the capacitance. In this regime, the Helmholtz capacitance, which is given by the green curve, is less than the, I mean, the Goy Chapman capacitance, which is given by the green curve, is less than the Helmholtz capacitance, which is a constant, right? It doesn't vary with voltages, but Goy Chapman capacitance is less than the Helmholtz capacitance, so the overall capacitance is dominated by the smaller of these two capacitance. So this dominates. So the behavior in this volt voltages is dominated by the Guy Chapman model or the Guy Chapman capacitance. Away from this region, the Helmholtz capacitance is less than the Guy Chapman capacitance. So the overall capacitance, that is the double layer capacitance, is dominated by the smaller of these two capacitances, that is the Helmholtz uh, capacitance. So the Helmholtz model is valid in this region. And uh, there is not significant capacitance variation with changes in potential. So putting all these things together, let us look at these, the, the Stern model against the experimental results. So what does the Stern model capture? First, this variation, that is the potential variation, the capacitance variation with variation in potential is captured. And the symmetry is also captured. That is the, uh, the positive and the negative potentials have similar capacitance variation that's captured here. And far away from the point of uh, zero charge, the capacitance is more or less a constant. That variation is also captured. And uh, the Guy Chapman uh, model captures the variation of um, increase in capacitance with concentration that is also captured by the Stern model. So this progress, but what is not captured is the lack of symmetry as you increase the concentration um, is not captured by the Stern model too. For this, we have to look at greater details, which we will look at in the next lecture. The Stern model also does a good job in the uh, getting the absolute magnitude of the capacitance right. If you look at the scale here, the differential capacitance is of the order of, uh, let's say, 0.15 farad by meter squared. Uh, the quantitative magnitude of the capacitance that is obtained by the Stern model compares well with what is observed in the experiments. 
so you get the confidence that many aspects of the electrode electro light interface is captured via the stern mod we can also look at few other results obtained from the stern model first is the potential variation so what do we have here you have a positive electrode so the potential variation is in this manner okay so as you get closer to the electrode electrolyte interface the potential decreases adjacent to the positively charged electrode are the negative ions as you go further away from the electrode electrolyte interface the potential drops to zero because the overall medium becomes net neutral so and within few dubai lengths this electro neutrality is reached that is an important conclusion so dubai length which is either referred to by the symbol lambda or beta so within few dubai length the overall system becomes net neutral so also it's important to look at the potential variation which you typically observe it is of the order of millivolts then electric field variation which is given by this curve is also shown here there is a um, uh, electric field depends upon gradient and potential there is a discontinuity in slopes uh, because of which the electric field shows a singularity so uh, there is um, this slope is constant the electric field is constant here this is all in the electrode region there is a small change in the slope here consequently the electric field changes because you have positive charges in the metal electrode adjacent to the metal electrode there is excess charge density which is negative and as you go away from the electrode surface the charge density gradually decreases and far away um the charge density is zero that is uh, corresponding to that the electric field is also zero and the potential also goes to zero so all these things can be intuitively understood also so you should try to understand why the quantitative predictions um of the stern model uh why they behave so in a physical manner so try to get an intuitive understanding um so stern model is fairly successful in understanding the uh, electrochemical double layer um behavior and the main deficiency is the asymmetry um that is the difference between capacitance variation at high concentration when you change the potential to positive regions and negative regions around the potential of zero charge that is not captured to understand that behavior we will look at certain aspects of behavior in the inner inner helmholtz plane and how it influences the capacitance that will be the topic of discussion in the next lecture thank you